Homebrew and 5th edition D&D has always been a point of contention for players and DMs alike. Because of places like D&D Wiki and the homebrew section on D&D Beyond, DMs will usually be against adding any homebrew to their games and will probably just stick to the official content. You guys pretty much followed that logic when I took this poll, showing that only 30% of you regularly make use of homebrew content in your games. Even so, 5th edition is lacking in content that really fits with many character concepts, and just reflavoring the existing stuff may not be enough to make it believable either. I'm here to tell you that while there is certainly terrible homebrew out there, there's an equal amount of incredibly detailed supplements that creators have poured their heart and soul into. Here's how homebrew can help fill the gaps of D&D 5e. About two years ago, I began a campaign where all the players were interested in playing kobolds. At the time, kobolds were only available in Volo's Guide to Monsters, and had a plus two dexterity and a minus two strength. Pack tactics would grant everyone in the party advantage on their attacks, and sunlight sensitivity is no fun for anyone involved. If there is a single kobold in the party, it might be okay, but a group of six is just wild. So we opted to use a homebrew where kobolds had no pack tactics or sunlight sensitivity and had sub-races to differentiate between them. I also allowed my players to choose whatever plus two and plus one to their racial stats that they wanted. At the end of the day, the kobolds my players were playing looked nothing like the kobolds in Volo's Guide. We just had to homebrew in order to play the campaign we wanted to play. It can, however, be dangerous for a DM to dive into homebrewing things themselves. For our purposes, the homebrew came out pretty well, mostly because they were all kobolds in the first place and wouldn't be compared to another race in the party. Other DMs who find themselves homebrewing may not be so lucky, creating grossly overpowered or underpowered races, classes, or subclasses that make the game less fun for everyone at the table. Power imbalances between party members can be one of the reasons for a broken campaign, so it's no wonder that DMs stray away from doing any homebrewing themselves. Instead, they may opt to reflavor the official content in order to match the player to their character concept. Reflavoring, from what I can tell, is extremely common in 5th edition games, but it's really just a patch job. We can pretend that someone's character fits the concept, though at the end of the day we're still bound by the features of a subclass or the effects of a spell. Let's take Ford from Critical Role Season 2 as a popular example. Travis is playing as a Hexblade Warlock, reflavored to have a patron from the depths of the ocean. But did it really feel like Ford's patron was granting him the powers of the Abyss when the Hexblade spell list doesn't really follow the theme? So all we're left with is watery Eldritch Blasts, drowned specters, and briny armors of Agathis. Once he multiclassed into a paladin, Matt Mercer made an attempt at homebrewing a paladin subclass for the theme, but that had some mixed results. Veth, keep your clothes on, and with my bonus action, I will cast Marine Layer. <laughs> 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 We're doing it. Does Lucian just start going, what? No! No! Most worthless fucking. What I'm trying to say is, it's so much more fun to have features that match the subclass rather than some flavor that is without substance. This brings us back to the game system as a whole. Wizards of the Coast has made it their goal to not bloat the system with dozens of classes and hundreds of subclasses like Pathfinder. In Pathfinder, whatever concept you could possibly think of exists as a class or subclass, and the endless feats will provide the extra features you need to flesh out the concept. Yet because of Pathfinder's barriers to entry, not many players will get to dive into it. After the end of our previous campaign, I've been introducing my players to Pathfinder 2nd Edition, which has eliminated many of those barriers. We haven't really needed to make any homebrew this time, even with many of my players playing kobolds. The character creation in that game makes it so that no two characters are alike. D&D 5e just can't compete with that. The one hope we do have is homebrew. One of the best supplements to come out recently is Children of the Dragon, a 100-page document filled with draconic themed races and subclasses. This supplement isn't afraid to facilitate very specific character concepts, like druid subclasses akin to the Circle of the Moon except for a focus on dinosaurs or dragons. Barbarians who channel the dragon's fury, clerics and paladins who worship dragons, or even warlocks with a draconic patron are all concepts found within. This focus on dragons really allows a player who wants to play into the draconic theme a ton of options, rather than just being forced to play a draconic sorcerer all the time. The supplement goes further with non-magical support specialists in the form of the Fighter Quartermaster, or a Lizard Folk exclusive cleric subclass that channels the power of the Ancestors. There's even a Monk subclass that grants them spellcasting akin to the Eldritch Knight. 
A player who wants to play a monk who meditates on the Weave of Magic would love this subclass, and its obvious Jedi inspiration is fun too. This supplement really drives home specific themes in their subclasses, which allows a player to really feel like they're living up to their character concept, rather than having to reflavor everything to make it work. Beyond this, there are a ton of other homebrews out there that do the same thing, bringing very specific character concepts to life with spells and features that actually match the idea. Overall, homebrewing and reflavoring has become a necessity after the seven years of 5th edition D&D. It needs homebrew because we all have character concepts that don't fit the mold of official content, and reflavoring never feels like enough of a fix. From Children of the Dragon to the plethora of other content found on DM's Guild, there are a ton of professionally made homebrew that's fairly well balanced and fun to play. So why not give it a try? So this video has been a long time coming, but I'm happy with how it's finally turned out. Now that I'm a YouTube partner, I'm planning on dedicating a lot more time to my channel, so you can expect a lot more to come. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, comment on what you thought about it, and subscribe if you've been enjoying my content. Huge shout out to my shout tier patrons, Chuck Stamos, Unix, Darkside Shane, Modnar Demetrius, Meopenheimer Nexus, and Smoothie Buns. I'll see you next time, and thanks for watching!